Carmela, you have friends, right? A few. And some of those friends like Cabernet Sauvignon, right? They do. I mean, they like it a lot, right? Yes, a lot. Well, I bet those friends would really like the wine we're going to be tasting and reviewing today. Oh, really? Well, what is it? It's called Tanat, and it's the national wine of Uruguay. Sounds exciting, right? Really exciting. Well, should we get started? Let's do it. All right. Hello and welcome to the Wine Pair Podcast. I'm Joe, your sommelier of reasonably priced wine, and this is my wife and my wine pairing partner in crime, Carmela. Hi there. And we are the Wine Pair. Oh. Did you like my new hello today? I know. What was I that? Know, that I'm was different. Something different. Okay. A quick orientation for those of you who <laughs> may be new. I'm changing it up. Who may be new to the podcast? In each episode, we learn about and we taste and we review three wines that are reasonably priced, which means under twenty dollars, mm-hmm. and should be easy for you to find. And our podcast is made for people like us, Carmela. Oh, good. It's made for people who really like wine, but want to learn more about different types of wines and find new wines to explore and feel more confident when they talk about and when we talk about an order of wines. Perfect. So if that sounds like you, you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. And you should also know that when we taste and rate our wines on this podcast, we're going to be honest with you. Mm. We're going to tell you... Honesty is the best part. That is. And we're going to tell you if we think the wine is crap or if it's great. Right. It doesn't mean that you won't like it or that you will... You'll love it. It's just what we think. It's just what we think. Our honest opinion. That's right. But we are also proud to say that we are officially recommended by the editors of Decanter Magazine. And they call us fun, irreverent, chatty, and entertaining. Why do I have to say the chatty line again? I don't know, but I was just trying to say, you you know, we are, we are, I do, we do. (laughs) But you know, Decanter, they like us, so that must mean something. Chatty's okay, apparently. Uh, That's right. So, (laughs) Carmela, this is an episode for the red wine lover in your life. Oh. Whoever that may be. Wow. I'll make sure to remember that. <laughs> wow. And even, wow. Aren't I don't know what that well, means. Well, no, you love red wine. I do. That's that was, I was trying to get there, but okay. you went somewhere else. And even more, the red wine lover who likes full-bodied wines with lots of tannin and rich flavors like a Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm, big ones. Now, that may not be you, Carmela, mm. and it may not even be me. But there are lots and lots and lots of red wine fans out there who like those big, bold wines. Oh, for sure. Right? It's very common for those who love those wines just to knee-jerk order a good old Cabernet Sauvignon, right? What, what do you mean knee-jerk? Just, just like, like, hey, I need a, oh, I'm just going to get a Cabernet Sauvignon, just, that's right? Their old, old it's standby, just their go-to. Like, oh, it's, it's a an, go-to. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like, easy, they, like they got mm, hit on the knee and they just right, kick. Right. Right? And so, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? You know what I say about that? Change it up. Yeah, it's right. Boring, boring. (laughs) Change it up. Time to step it up a little. Try something different and maybe find something new that you just might like. How about that? I like it. And maybe even love it. Ooh. Do you love it a lot? I mean, we'll see. Okay, so for this episode, as we said in our little intro, we're going to try a wine called Tanat. Hmm. And what is that you say? You've what ne- is that you say? I you've mean, never, what is that? <laughs> you've never heard of Tanat? No, well, I have not heard of Tanat. <laughs> well, we're here to educate you on that today okay. about old, good old Tanat. Mm. Okay. Now, we're not going to bag on Cabernet Sauvignon. After all, it is a very, 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 very popular, popular wine. Absolutely. In fact, it is the most widely grown wine grape in the world. Wow. And in the world? In the world. There are Holy over. Now, listen cow. to this. There are over 840,000 acres dead dedicated to it across the globe. Oh my goodness. The that's next amazing. Cl- I the mean, ne- then it's just like a dime a dozen though. Well, that's why I'm saying that's why be different, be bold, right. try something new. So the next most popular grape is Merlot and it has oh. nearly 25% fewer acres dedicated to oh, it. Oh my God, cabs, they got the corner on them whole They do. Market. And even in the United States, it's true. Wow. 10% of all U.S. vineyard space is set aside for Cabernet Sauvignon. Wow. So, you know, there are lots of things that people love about Cabernet Sauvignon. So what do you think some of those things are Carmela. Well, it is definitely big and bold That's and right. juicy and fruity normally. That's right. That's right. It's like having a whole meal in a glass. Yeah, we sometimes I like to say that it feels like it punches you in the face. Right, right. It's big. Boom. If you want if you like to get hit in the face. <laughs> this is your wine for you. Yeah. Why I can't else? Wait other than to people get hit in the face. Other than I people think. like to get hit in the face, what are some other reasons people <laughs> like Cabernet Sauvignon? Um <laughs> it, but you know, I think people do like to you know drink it with like big meals. Totally. You know, like a big steak or totally. a big 
cheeseburger. I don't know. They, they don't have to be big. I guess. No, you know. no. I actually do think it pairs well with rich foods. Right. So it's a pretty versatile wine, but it's really aiming towards those bigger foods, red mm. wines or red wines, red meats, mm-hmm. like Ameri- typical American diets and some other places in the world that have those diets. So that's exactly right. Mm. What else? What else? What else? Oh, I don't know, honey. I think I've said a lot. Okay. So here's what about a, you? Well, here's a couple. You know, it's it's pretty easy to grow. So oh, okay. people, a lot of times it's made like it's popular to be made because, hey, winemakers are like, I can grow this grape and people are going to buy it, mm. right? Okay. Mm. It also ages well. So a lot of people like a Cabernet Sauvignon because they can leave it in their cellar. And over time, when it's a good Cabernet Sauvignon, not a crappy seven, Cabernet Sauvignon, it'll age well and the chain, the flavor will change. So mm. it can have some complexity. And as it right. ages, it changes. And that's kind of fun. And you can kind of get excited about it, like storing it away in your exactly. cellar. And then you pull that Funny look, this is out. 20 years old. Wow. Exactly. Look at me. I've been saving this for you. That's right. And then it's also ubiquitous. There's a 10 cent word. It's ubiquitous. Mm. It's like go to any grocery store, go to any wine shop, go to any bar, and there's going to be Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. It's, it's usually a guarantee. like the red wine cho- of choice. I and, mean, like the, the, if you say the house red, yeah. oftentimes it'll be a Cabernet, won't it? Yeah. I mean, it's almost a joke. Like when we go out, like we went to the Chieftain by Seattle University mm-hmm. the other night, and we said, what's your red wine? Cabernet Sauvignon. What's your white wine? Chardonnay. Chardonnay. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you can just guarantee that right. if they if they have to think about it at all, they're going to say, well, we've got a Cabernet Sauvignon. Right. right? Like, right. So it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's also global. And, you know, when we say uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is all over the place, it's all over the place. It's grown in nearly every wine grape growing region. And what's kind of cool about that is it can be different depending on where it's grown and how it's made. So, hmm. you know, it's not just one size fits all. There are different styles and types and kinds of stuff with Cabernet Sauvignon. So there it is, oh, right? People, I love it. Yeah, and people love it. People, yeah. we get it. And so, you know, again, but a, a goal of ours on this podcast is to help people like you find new wines. Like that, me? Like, well, I mean, like <laughs> you. I meant the royal you. No, I didn't mean the royal. I mean, the general you, the okay, you out there, right? Okay, okay. Uh, of, of people to find wines that they might like that are a little bit different. And we think Tanat, which, by the way, is super popular, as I said, in Uruguay, mm-hmm. which we'll also talk about that more later, is a great option because it has some of the same characteristics of a Cabernet Sauvignon, but with its own special flair. Okay. And the, oh, I can't wait to hear what makes it different or what sets it apart. We're going to talk about I it. Know. And in some ways, that's similar to like Malbec. Remember, like mm-hmm. we tried Malbec. Some people are like, hey, if you like Cabernet, you like Malbec. And Malbec is, it does have some similarities to it, uh, to Cabernet Sauvignon, but it has some differences. And it has some, Malbec also has some similarities to Tanat. Mm. Uh, it's growing in appeal. It's a South American wine or a wine that's grown often in South American countries. And it's a, a, wine, a great wine on its own right. And it gives you, you know, the opportunity to try other red wines or you're out and you want to try something different and you mm-hmm. know what you like, but you, you don't want to just have a cab soft. Like, there you, you go. You want to impress somebody with like, oh, I'd like a glass of the Tanat. And oh, go, that's what, what I'm saying. Like the records, you know. Yeah, like, oh, right? what's, what's she having? Ooh, right. I want what she's got. Right. Why is she so cool? <gasps> That's what people say about you all the time. You think so? I don't think so. (laughs) They do. They do. Okay, so we're going to find out more about Tanat, what makes it special, why it's a good choice for Cabernet lovers. But first... We got to do our shameless plug. That's right. So first, we want to start by saying thank you for listening to us and supporting our show. And if you not, have not had the chance to do so yet, now would be a really awesome time to subscribe to our podcast as a free way to support us. And then you never have to miss a show. And thank you to all of you who have already subscribed. We really appreciate it. And another great way to support us for free is to leave a nice rating and review on our website or on Apple Podcasts or other service that you're on that maybe allows you to do that kind of thing. That would be great. And it allows other people to find us and say, hey, we like these hey. guys too. Mm-hmm. And you can also follow us and see fun pictures. Sometimes they're fun. We'll see if this week you think they're fun. Of these, Let uh, us know. Uh, yeah, th- these wines we're tasting and trying today on Instagram at The Wine Pair Podcast. And you can contact us on our website at thewinepairpodcast.com and you can send us questions and all that fun stuff. And as we do every week, we'll tell you someone we think you should tell about The Wine Pair Podcast. And this week, we want you to tell anyone who loves Cabernet Sauvignon and is looking for a new wine to try to expand their wine repertoire. Wow. Like if somebody just came to you and said, to this week, my goal <laughs> is. You're sitting with them at a new, bar. Yeah. And they're just like, and they're, they're just, struggling. They're, they're milking like, oh that Cabernet. And they're like, I, you know what I really I wanted to, to tell you? I really want to tell you this. 
I need to expand my wine repertoire. Exactly, exactly. And they're like, they finally put their foot down. I'm doing it. I, so I, those are the people that you need to tell yeah, about our yeah. show. You know, if you see this them, episode. if you can spot them. Oh, you, they may you, be your yes, best friend yeah. or your spouse. True. Yeah. Okay, here you go. Okay. So, Carmela, you may be asking yourself, what the fuck is Tanat? Well, I, well not quite <laughs> Is that, that what you're way? asking yourself? No, I wasn't like, <laughs> what, you know, but uh, yeah, I do want to know more about it. Okay, what the F is it? Yeah, what okay. the beep? Well, Tanat is a wine made from a grape called... Tanat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Tanat originally came from southwestern France in a region called Madrin. Oh. It's M-A-D-R-I-R-A-N. That like you're speaking a little French. <laughs> it's Madrin. You have to kind of... <laughs> yeah. Right? Like wow. say, Okay. Now, uh, Madrin is near the Pyrenees mountain range, which I also said wrong, which, which borders Spain. And it's still grown there. And while France still grows the most Tanat... The country that is, and I've said this now about 14 times, that's most known for Tanat production today is Uruguay, huh. where it is known as the national grape. Oh my. And fun fact. Do we have a national grape? <laughs> I don't. I actually don't know if the United <laughs> States does. And probably if we did, it'd be some like table grape, not a wine grape. But oh, anyway. Okay. Okay. That's for another day. But exactly. I just didn't know that people had like, you know, their, their yeah. state grape. There's national their birds. National, there's yeah. national right, animal. Right. And, and now I'm curious. A grape. <laughs> so uh, now, fun fact, Carmela, all of the Tanat wines that we're going to be tasting today come from Uruguay. Nice. So there you go. Okay. Now, on a side note, in France, the wine is pronounced without the T at the end, so it's Tanat. Of course. But in Uruguay, it's pronounced Tanat. Mm. And when you're looking for the French version, you will also find that the wine, like a lot of French wines, is named for the region that it comes from rather than the grape. So you can be reasonably sure that if you find a red wine from France called Madaron, it will be a wine made from Tanat. Tanat. That's right. Tanat. So you just got to get used to that kind of stuff in French and Italian, Spanish wines. And sometimes they're going to name it by the region. Okay. Now, more fun facts. You ready for more fun facts, I, I'm Carmela? I'm dying. I mean, there are more. lots of fun facts. My God. I mean, if I just let you loose, it'll be <laughs> fun fact, you know, day. Fun fact Friday. Okay. <laughs> Uruguay, exactly. Uruguay does not make a ton of wine, Carmela, but over a third of all wine made in Uruguay is Tanat. Oh, a third. Wow. wow. 33.3%. They do. Huh. And Tanat was actually one of the very first wine grapes brought to Uruguay in 1870. So the start wow. of Uruguayan, that's how you say it, Uruguayan wine production and Tanat are intertwined. Like a Wow. Like, like they vines. go together. They, they go, go together. together. That's right. Okay, wow. Now, Uruguay is also not a huge country. Hmm. It's actually about the size of our state, Washington State. Okay. So it's not hmm. a big country. Mm -hmm. And its vineyards are mostly located on its coastline where the climate can be a little bit more wide, uh, mild. Okay. And there are currently fewer than 300 wineries in Uruguay. So they don't, they don't hmm. make a ton of wine. Now, hmm. one online source said there were only 180 wineries, but you know what? Internet, right? Like right. Sometimes you get Can't some... Can't always trust. Uh, who, who knows what to trust? But 300 feels right. Okay. Uh, and most of them are very small. And the whole country produces only about 67,000 liters or about 10 million cases of wine a year. Oh. Now, that may sound like a lot, but for comparison, remember, they do... 67,000 liters, right, a year. Okay. Italy, which is the largest wine producing country, oh. produces over 4.2 million liters. Wow. Okay. Right? That does, and, yeah. and the U.S. is number four, and we make 2.3 million liters. Goodness. So Uruguay is a much, much smaller wine producing country. And in fact, it's number 28 in terms of the ranking of countries that make the most wine. So it's mm. not, you know, there's not a lot coming out. Right. But uh, most of it that's coming out is Tanat. Okay, so let's talk about Tanat, the wine itself. Okay. Tanat is known as an aggressive and bold wine. Wow. Just right up your oh alley. Oh my God, just aggressive. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's the greatest adjective for a bottle of wine. Well, I think some people do like that. They're like, man, you know, like, I want a, I want a big wine. I want a big wine. Wow. I mean, aggressive. <laughs> aggressive. Oh, yeah. yeah but that's, that's what it's known for. My goodness. So it's not for the faint of heart, right? And it's a wine that's described as having... I mean, gregarious might be better. <laughs> but that's different. Than, than, aggre than well, aggressive. Yeah, I guess it, I know it is, but aggressive, I feel like you're going to you get want attacked. It, you want it to be You gregarious. want a wine attack. You want it to be more like, hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> exactly. Not like, hey, come <laughs> yeah. here. Aggressive means like, you're going to get punched fight, in the fight, face. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, right. true. Okay. You say that. Oh, God. Okay. okay. So can I keep going? Yes, please. Okay. So this is a wine. Tanat is a wine that's described as having a lot of tannin and a lot of body and a moderate amount of acid. And that's why, in a way, it's very similar to Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. And then other wines that would be similar with really high tannin and big body and moderate acidity are things like Petit Verdot, Petit Syrah, 
Monastrell, an Italian wine called Sagrantino di Montefalco and Alianico, which we've also had. Ah. And that's also an Italian wine. Mm -hmm. Now, Tanat wines also tend to be oaked and they can be aged so that they mellow out. So again, very similar to Cabernet Sauvignon, which is usually oaked mm -hmm. and usually you want it to age a little bit. Uh, but uh, evidently they also make some unoaked and, and even sparkling versions. Huh. Uh, and then taste profiles are similar to Cabernet Sauvignon as well. So black fruits, uh, plum, smoke. So you may get some of those things. Okay. Now the wine is often described as astringent. And I did mm. look that up because we've described wines as astringent. Now, technically, astringent means that it has the feeling of coating the tongue and drying out the mouth and making you maybe want to pucker a bit. But I also think wow. of I also think astringent is is um, connected to alcohol, mm -hmm. like high alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I think those things kind of work together. But that's that is why it's kind of an aggressive wine. Okay. Wow. Right. Yeah. And then when it comes Put to a food, leash on it. that's right. That's right. Forget, <laughs> don't let it. Bite your neighbor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? I don't know. When it comes to... F I don't know. <laughs> hey, I don't know stay either. away from my wine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. when Or wine. Stay away from my neighbor. That's right. Okay. When it comes to food similar to what we said about Cabernet Sauvignon, it's going to be a wine that should be paired with fatty foods and protein-rich foods. So again, like red meats and steaks and game if you're into that kind of thing and rich mm. stews. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this will be interesting, Carmela, because I'm not sure that these wines are quite up your alley. We'll uh, see. Yeah. We will be, see. It'll be interesting to try this wine. I don't think we've ever had it before. And I don't think we've ever had a wine from Uruguay before. I don't think so. So I think this will be really fun. Okay. Okay. And then if you want to learn more, you can head over to our show notes by going to our website and looking for this episode and then clicking to open our show notes. And we have lots of great articles and links and all sorts of fun stuff. Hmm. But let's learn a little bit more about the specific wines that we are drinking today. Okay. Right. So here we go. As usual, all the wines that we have chosen for this episode are under $20. That's nice. what we do, because that, that's what we do, that's Carmela. What, yeah, that's part of the deal. That's right. And all of them should be relatively easy to find, because I bought them all on wine.com. So we know if you can get wine.com, which you, most of you can in the United States, then you you're good. You can get these wines. Yeah. And then while Tanat may not be the easiest wine to find, I know you can also find it like at our local Total Wine store. So my oh. bet is if you look around a little bit, you can find it. And again, remember that maybe you can't find the Uruguayan version of it, but if you go to a French wine section of a French, you know, of a, of a wine shop and you find Maderon, that's Tanat. Okay. And so you may be able to find that more easily right. than the Uruguayan version, but you can find it. Now, is Tanat typically inexpensive or does it just really? Well, that's a good question. I mean, the the I think the Uruguayan versions tend to be, you know, below $20. Okay. I didn't see a lot that were like kind of breaking the bank. Mm. I didn't really look for Maderon. Oh, Did you like the way I said God. that? I think you uh, just keep wanting to say it. I do, it, huh? I do. So I don't know if it's, but I, I have a feeling it's not going to be a super expensive wine. Okay. In general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, all of these wines were also well regarded, Carmela. Each of them has a rating between somewhere between like 89 and 90 from wine enthusiasts. Mm. And Wine and Spirits gave one of the wines a 93 rating. My so those goodness. Are, those are pretty those high are, ratings. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And then also previous vintages for several of these wines have also been highly rated. So... You know, at least we know out of this crop, it's not like we, we got a bunch of crap out of this crop. Like, this is a good we crop of wine. We will see. We'll we, see. In, theory, right. in theory. Exactly. In theory. Okay. Okay, so the first wine is called Bodega Garzon Uruguay Reserva Tanat 2020. And this is evidently a highly regarded wine. The winery is in the Maldonado region of Uruguay, which is a coastal area. And the area is growing in popularity for wine grape growing and wine production because the weather's a little cooler there. Mm. And evidently the soils are kind of rock which is something that wine likes. Wine likes rocky, Good, uh, dra uh, draining yeah. soil. They don't like heavy, thick soils. Ah. So, And it's, by the way, it's located in a tiny town called Garzon, which is like 600 people. Wow. Yeah, so it's a little, tiny. little tiny town. Wow. The wine is fermented in cement tanks, and then it's aged for 6 to 12 months in untoasted French oak, which is probably where the reserve... Untoasted? Res exactly. The reserva probably comes from the fact that it's aged for 6 to 12 months. Untoasted is kind of unique, hmm. because usually they toast or kind of 
burn the oak barrels, mm. but this is untoasted and it's French. So French oak tends to be a little bit less oaky than like American oak. And if it's untoasted, it should even be a little bit less oaky. Okay. So I'm curious to see how much oakiness kind of comes through in this wine, mm-hmm. or if it's a little different than a little you know, like subtle. heavy oaky wines. Yeah, yeah, not as aggressive. Yeah, as aggressive. Like we had that that um, Hess uh, Cabernet Sauvignon at dinner last Sunday, mm-hmm. and I thought it was pretty oaky, like right. pretty aggressive. Like pretty punch you in the face. Yeah, so we'll see if this one's the same. And then Wine Enthusiast gave this wine a top 100 rating in 2021. My goodness. So it could be a good wine. Yeah. I, I got oh, high interesting. hopes. Interesting. Okay. The second wine we're going to try is called Familia Traversa Tanat, and it's from a region called Montevideo, and that's the second largest grape growing area in Uruguay. And the Traversa Winery mentions that they produce 75% of their own energy from things like solar energy. So how about that? Wow. So that's kind of cool. And they also don't use herbicides, and they use natural fertilizers made from plants. Cool. And they also hand pick their grapes. Oh, boy. Another the, hand picker. Wow. It just, bing, bing, yeah, one at exactly. a time. Grape bing, by bing, grape. Yeah. Oh. Come here, little grape. Oh. No, I want That's you. I just I keep thinking you. of like, yeah. I pick you. I pick you. <laughs> you, I don't you pick. You get a grape. No. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and then they, they ferment their uh, wine in stainless steel tanks, and then they age it for only two months in American oak. Oh. So it's only two months in oak, but American oak, again, a little bit more aggressive. Um, so a little bit more oaky oak, but only two months. So Maybe that's not going to be as mm. like punch you in the face. Mm-hmm. Now, Wine and Spirits gave this wine a 90 po- points, and it also called it a best buy and a top 100 wine uh, for that year. So that's two top 100 wow. wines. Wow. Wow. Oh, my right? goodness. So yeah. from different groups, but top 100 wines. Okay. And then the last wine is called Marichal Uruguay Reserve Tanat, and it's our oldest of the bunch. It's a 2018. And by the way, oh, this wow. is the one that we had a little bit of trouble opening the cork. We did. We did. By the way, we opened these early. We had a bad cork experience. We did have a bad cork experience. So I'm a little bit worried about it. and, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Curse words. Um, but we did open up these wines because they're oaky and big and bold and red and a little young. I wanted to make sure we give them a little bit of room to breathe. But anyway, that's for, that's for a few minutes from now. Okay, so this wine comes from the largest wine producing area in Uruguay called Canalones, and it's also close to the capital of Montevideo, and it's also supposed to have like a milder climate and clay soils. And the Marichal Winery is family owned, and it started in 1938, so it's been around oh, for a while. Wow. And from what I can tell, this was a little bit confusing, they aged their wine for 12 months in oak, but they hold back 30% of the wine unoaked. Okay. So we, I think they hmm. did that on like one of the wines that we tried from South America as well, where they kept some of the wine back mm-hmm. from the oaking. And so maybe that mellows and it out. And then they mix it. And then they mix we it mix before it. they bottle mm-hmm. it, right before they bottle it. Okay. Yeah. And then they also use malolactic fermentation, which we talked about before, which is a way to kind of like mellow out a wine a little bit. Mm-hmm. And um, I like all these practices. That's right. So. Anyway, you know, there was a little bit different information on the Marichal website versus what Wine.com had to say, but I'm going to trust the Marichal Wine site. I mean, they make I the wine. I think you should. Right? I trust right. those guys. Right. And we have links to that stuff in our show notes, etc. So this will be fun, Carmela. We have so fun. three different Tanat wines, all from Uruguay, all well-rated from different publications, but three different years mm-hmm. and three different regions. So we'll see if we like this first as a varietal. Do we like Tanat? And then having the three different versions will help us make sure that it's, we didn't get a good, uh, like just one, one we found was really good or one we found was really bad. And if you only try one, you may, you're not going to get the full like sense of like, do I like this wine or not? Or do I like certain styles or types of it or not? Mm. So this will be good. This will be really fun. Okay. So on that note, I think we've been talking long enough. Should we drink some wine? Let's get to it. Let's do it. Because I've been talking a lot and my throat's getting dry. Okay. I need some to, you know. Loosen what? yourself up. What the whistle? That's, That's right. right. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and we are ready to try our first Tanat. This is so exciting. Okay, oh. so I'm going to explain it while you smell it a little bit, Carmela. So this is the Bodega Garzon Uruguay Reserva Tanat. It's from the Maldonado region of Uruguay. The producer is Bodega Garzon. This is a 2020, so it might be on the on the young side. It was $16.99 at wine.com. It's 14% alcohol, so it's decently, you know, decent amount of alcohol. Yeah. 100% Tanat as far as I know. And the uh, professional ratings, James Suckling gave it a 91. Boo. Uh, Wine Enthusiast gave it a 90. And Wine and Spirits gave it a 93. So what might you be smelling, Carmelita? Okay. So I do. I am. It does smell alcoholic to me. Mm-hmm. You, can, you know, I know you said it's a little high in alcohol. 
But you also said, which I agree, it smells like a red wine. It's a classic kind yeah. of red wine smell, yeah. cherry, but but like a black cherry. Mm-hmm. It's got some smoke there's on it. There's a little it. bit, yeah. I and mean, there's also a little bit of um, sour cherry, too, I think, you in think this so? one. Yeah, you maybe it's, maybe that? that's the youth that I'm smelling, Might be. too, you know, but... A little bit of wood, too. A little bit of smoke or wood or smoky wood, you know? Mm-hmm. Kind of fire, but like end of fire. The smoke at the end when you blow out the fire. Mm-hmm. Agree. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think it's also got some spice. Like it's a got some spiciness baking spice? Mm, and more like a peppery, peppery kind of spice. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can get behind that for sure. It's got, yeah. It's, some, not, as, it's not as a warm smelling of a wine. No, and I, I, I'm getting a little like earthiness on it, mm. like a little earthy. Do you get a little dirt or earth or even vegetal, like like mm. herbs or something? A little bit, a little Maybe. bit. Yeah. Okay, well, let's uh, let's taste it and see what we think. Okay. It's like classic red wine. Mm, it's got it's like much cherry. And, yes, like I can taste that cherry. Cherry and plum flavors. It's actually, ple- it doesn't have a ton of oak. I was going to say, it's not very oaky. It's not a punch you in the face. It's really not. No, it's a little smoother. And the fruit's coming through that that black cherry, that darker, mm-hmm. more ripe cherry, actually. I was, it was smelling kind of tart to me, but I think it's a little bit of a richer cherry. I agree. Uh, I, and I'm getting a little bit of that Malbec-y kind of like um, mellowness. It's got a little bit of that, like I can see what they're saying about like astringency, because it is kind of cleaning off the tongue and it's got a little bit of that like puckering a little bit, but it's pretty smooth. Well, I think so too. It's, it's And that's why it's reminding me a little bit of Malbec, where it's mm-hmm. not like overpowering. It's pretty smooth. Not a lot of tannin. Not, not, not It's got some tannin. A little bit, yeah, but not like, some. I think sometimes that that real oaky, yeah. those really heavy it's oaked not oak. ones It's are, not super no, oaked. No, I don't think so at all. And it's got good body. It's, it's got a little bit of chewiness in it, mm-hmm. but it's not like, it's not flabby. Like, no, you know what it, I mean? It doesn't yes. feel like it's just... You know, like flopping around in your right. mouth. You don't just go wow, like yeah. after you take a sip. Super pleasant. Wow. Yeah, I like it. I, I, like, I like it, it. Too. What um, what food would you pair with this tanat? Well, I think you could do a lot of the you know typical American totally. big meals that people totally. like to have. The red meat, steak. It'd go great with steak, grilled steak. Right. Like it would taste really Ooh, good with, with a grilled juicy food. steak. It would be grilled good. Like, yeah. over a fire mm-hmm. mm, with that extra. Kissed. Yeah. Whoa. Well, I never heard you say that before. Cacao. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other okay, yeah. thing. Actually, maybe it does have a little cacao. Maybe, whoa, mm-hmm. uh, maybe it does have a little chocolate in it. Maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, sorry, we were talking about foods. What other? Foods? No. What do you think? Well, like pizzas, pastas, like red this sauce, is... big red sauce. Um, like yeah. A puttanesca. Ooh, puttanesca, Ooh, puttanesca, puttanesca would be, would be really good. Something good. a little spicy yeah, would be good. I think so. I think it could handle that. Yes, and even just any type of bolognese sauce. Ooh, yeah, would be great. And also like spicy sausages you know like chorizo Ooh, or oh. like a spicy italian sausage or something it would yes, taste really good that would be really Ooh, i just nice. have that like a, like a spicy italian sandwich with a little Roasted bit of red peppers, peppers. Mm, that would, this would be so good with that salumi and you know it's funny that one of the things i was reading about and talked about is it's supposed to be a versatile food wine mm-hmm. it really this feels like a very versatile yeah, wine you could have a nice yeah. big sub yeah i think so yeah I so, think it's good. I I am enjoying this wine. I, I agree. Hmm. It's good. It's yeah. nice. It's super pleasant. I'm almost getting a little bit of rosiness on it too. Maybe oh, it's just wow. a touch, a hmm. touch, mm-hmm. a touch of rose. Rosé. Rosé. No, not rosé. Rose. Rose. Right. I get it. Rosemary. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's rate it. So, as a reminder, on our rating scale for all of our friends out there in listening land, what we do is we rate on a scale of one to ten. Okay, one to ten whole numbers not six and a half not seven and a half you gotta go do i ever do halves no because i won't let you oh and remember seven and above seven is a good rating except for us seven and above means we're gonna buy this wine and a four below means that we're gonna probably pour it down the sink Mm. and a five or six means good enough to drink we're gonna finish it but we may look for something better yeah right like yeah. No, I'm just thinking about this wine a lot because I feel, thinking, I think if I mean, is this wine I'm either like, going to keep me up at night or wow. I'm just going to be, no, no. But why are you so obsessed with this wine? I'm, I am obsessed with it. Well, it's one of those things because I do like the idea of opening people's minds yeah. to something different oh, yeah. that I would buy. I'm thinking about my rating. I would definitely buy this wine. Totally. I mean, it would be. This like, is a crowd pleaser. Yes, this I This is agree. a wine that I think it would be hard for somebody to go, oh, oh I don't like this no, wine. No, no. It's subtle enough for the people who don't want too bold. Yeah. That they'll like it. But for the people who like the bold, 
I think that they would find this a great, um, just another great wine to enjoy. Yeah, I agree. And I so, um, but I do think it'd be kind of fun to bring it as a gift too. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you're bringing it to like as a hostess gift or host gift. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna give it. I mean. I'm going to give it a big fat seven. Yeah. And I could, it might even, you know, I'm giving it a seven, like a really solid seven. What about you? I, I'm too. I'm giving it a solid, I'm, I'm really torn between giving it a solid seven and a solid eight. Yeah. I think I might give it an eight. Okay. I think I might give it an eight because I'm really enjoying it. This is a wine I could really enjoy almost any night of the week with almost any food. I'm really, with I really people? like it. Any people. I think huh. people would like it. Um, I'm actually, now that I'm kind of tasting this a little bit more, I'm getting a little wood on it, a little okay. cedar, like yeah. a little, mm-hmm. like anyway, I'm sorry, distracted, but I think this is a great wine and I agree. Like crowd pleaser, you're having a dinner party, you're having people over, they, they would love this wine. I think so. Really? Yeah. Th- you'd have a hard and time. I just think it's fun to, to, to have something new with somebody. Yeah. And I think you said it exactly right. Like you could have people all over the red wine spectrum and I think they would, they would all, all find something it. to like yeah, about it. Yeah, I think so. Good. Well, the first one's a winner. Okay. We're going to see what the next one's like. So we're going to take a little break, and we are going to try our next one. Okay, we are back, and we are ready to try our next wine. This one is the Familia Traversa Tanat. And I will say, like, these wines have been dark, but this one is, like, really dark. Yes, this is, like, inky. It's, like, yes, almost Inky black. purple. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super deep. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one is from uh, Montevideo, Uruguay. The producer is Familia, Familia Traversa. Mm-hmm. This is a 2019, so a little bit older. $16.99, same price as the last one at wine.com. This is only 12.5% alcohol, which I think is mm. kind of a low alcohol for this wine hmm. and 100% to Nat and uh, wine enthusiasts gave this a 90. Okay, Carmelo, what are you smelling? Um, hmm. Well, when I first smelled it, it almost had a little bit of that rosy smell on it for me, but I'm also mm-hmm. getting kind of a, uh, like a licorice. Okay, I uh, yeah, like I can, a, you I can know, get like that. a. Mm, kind of like a like a um, gourmet licorice, not like okay. a red vine, more or a okay. Twizzler, more mm-hmm. of just like a Australian chewy. Licorice. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I actually, I'm with you on that. I'm getting more of that alcoholy astringent mm-hmm. kind of smell on it, almost like you know, when you were saying roses. I almost think of like rose perfume, right? Right. Yeah. You know, like where it's mm-hmm. got that kind of like perfumey kind of smell and mm-hmm. alcoholy mm-hmm. kind of perfumey mm-hmm. smell. Are you getting any cherries? Plum, not as much cherry, a little bit of cherry, more, more plum, plum mm-hmm. I feel like, because it's a little tart, more tart mm, than a cherry, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. there's some, almost something sour in it. Like Both not of a them bad had that. Yeah. Both of them, to me, had that sour. The other one, Actually, I'm getting more of the sour cherry on this and one. And this one? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. There was something else I was smelling, and I can't quite like, put it's my finger It's a little smoky. On. You think smoky? You think smoky? A little bit. Hmm. Okay, you know, I'm not. Get, I'm not getting quite as much smoke or even wood on this one. Hmm. But I think we should. I try think we should it. try it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's more tart. It's definitely more tart. Definitely more tart. It's more like a tart cherry. Yeah. Not and a it, lot of sweet fruit. No, and it's way more astringent. Like when you talk about that, like puckering and taking yeah. the. Like I can, I can get that on this one. Right. Right. More so. For sure. And that that little tartness is kind of doing it. Yeah. Like my tongue feels dry and I, this is super dry. You do want to pucker on this yeah. guy. And almost like the t- flavor is totally gone. Like didn't linger. It just mm-hmm. left. Mm-hmm. But um, it's mm. not as, the last one was so smooth. This one's less smooth. It also doesn't have as much like kind of depth of flavor no, or, no. B- or body on it. The I don't tartness think. is really kind of taking over. Mm-hmm. It tastes young. That's what I was going to say. I wonder if it's a little young. Yeah, but it's also, but it, yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Ooh. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, I'm too, getting really astringent it's now. It's almost like a, you know, like a really deep, like uh, blood orange. Oh, I don't know that's where kind of that's coming from, but like that, a tart blood orange. Yeah. It's, yeah. Cause it's got tartness on it. Yeah. There's something about oh. citrusy yeah. or like lemony. Citrus. I don't know why, yes, but yeah, I agree. Fully agree with mm-hmm. that because it's really just kind of like it is that puckering. Right. This is a, this is Unusual. a good definition of an astringent wine. Right. It, it seems very different than the first one. And just the, different. The, 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 the yeah, the garzon was so smooth, so like this one. You know, they say like a, a big bodied. It's got so much of that astringency to it. It almost doesn't seem to have much body. Yeah. I almost feel like it should have more alcohol. Like it just Maybe. needs something to kind of fill it out a little bit. I'm smelling and it does a little much, cinnamon oh. now, though, too. I don't know why. Okay. All right. Cinnamon. I like it. A little 
a little like softer, like a baking spice. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's more of the plum. I like, don't know, but I'm not tasting. That, I'm not more tasting like like a plum jam almost, like a plum jammy kind of taste. Maybe, or but it's not very sweet. I think it's, it's more sweet. fresh plum. Okay. And a red plum, not a purple. I just talked into the glass. Wow, okay. it's like telephone. But I the- don't know. I f- it's one of those things where I keep wanting to taste it to see if I'm getting a different taste, but it's almost got a little bit of sour grape to it. Yeah, I don't like mean to sour be sour red grapes. grape. Yeah, grapes. Or like a, like grape. Yeah, or like a sour, <laughs> or like a really tart blueberry kind of yes, taste to it. Yes, it's definitely an unripe yeah, fruit. Yeah. What uh, what food might you pair with this tanat, Carmel? Well, this one's a little trickier, right? Yeah, think. I don't know if, you know, the thing is, it's like a big steak. It might have a hard time standing up to that. It just might need more time. Yeah. It might need yes. to like kind of breathe a little bit more or sit in your cellar a little bit I'm longer. I'm not sure it's going to complement something big as nicely. Mm-mm. Uh I think you would probably want to stick more to like something bready, like a pizza. Um, I was kind of thinking the yeah, same I don't thing. Know if or you're a, gonna, a burger. Like a, a burger, burger would be good. Something with some bread around yes, it. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I with think that. so too. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it might be okay. It needs food. I think you want to have it with food because I don't think it's a great like standalone, like we're going to sit around and drink kind of wine. The first no. one, you could have it without food or with food, like a really good wine. Right. This one, I feel like you kind of got to have something with it, right. a nice piece of cheese or something. I was just going to say, even like a baked brie. Ooh. Something like that. A baked that brie would, would be really be nice. Good. You really are on the bready side of it. Uh, yeah. I don't know sure. why. I think you need to have some sort of puff paste. Trees, yeah. something along with it. I think you'd have to be careful about doing anything like a red uh, tomato sauce. It might be too acidic. Yeah, I don't to kind of like pair it would, with it. Yeah, I'm not sure. It would, yeah, it's not no. going to complement it quite no. as nicely. Perhaps. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what uh, what rating would you give this wine? Well, you know, I, I'm thinking probably like a five. That's gosh, it's funny. I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like, it's not something where I'm like, oh, I'm not going to drink this. No. But I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to seek it out, like, for the second glass. Like, I'll, I'd finish it. And if it was the only thing around, like, I keep drinking it, it's fine. Like, I'm fine right, with right. it. But I don't, it's not like, um, I wouldn't go out of my way to find it. Well, and the thing but is. But it's this... not, it's not, it's not, sorry. No, no. It's not, um, it's not. Like it's not offensive. offensive. No, yeah. no, no. And it is. It's not. It's one of those like. It might be. It's good to try a few of these. Yes. Because they're and, different. They're very different. And you might actually appreciate this one more. Like if you, this is more your style. Yeah. But when it comes to a Tanat, so far, I think the first one's more way more in our, our style. Yeah. Way more our style. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you, but if you like a really astringent wine, which to me this does not feel like a Cabernet Sauvignon. Either. No. It's it's different. St- like a. Cabernet Sauvignons are big, bold. Like a lot of times, there are these big, bold, oaky wines. Mm-hmm. That's not what this is. Not at all. There's hardly any oak on it. No, either. exactly. Yeah. So it's not. I don't think it's quite fitting that bill either. No. So, but I think you have to try. Bong. Bong. I think you have to try it and like see what you think. What did you give it? Five. Oh, I also give it a five. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm with you. We've been we've been kind of close in our ratings. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna try our last wine and see what we think. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are back, and we are ready to try our last wine. This is the Marichal, Marichal, it's M-A-R-I-C-H-A-L, Uruguay Reserve Tanat. So just a note, again, this one had the cork that kind of like wasn't working for us. It was kind of disintegrating Mm. a little bit. And so, uh, you know, I don't know, don't get confused. That doesn't mean the wine is corked. It just means it had a bad cork. It could be a corked wine in that... It may have, like, if the cork failed, the wine may not be as good, but we're going to find out. It doesn't have kind of the look or quite the smell of a, a really off wine, so I think it might be okay, but but we'll see. Um, it's not also quite as dark as the last one. No, I don't think so, so either, yeah. So mm. we'll see. It may, you have I don't to know. tell me what you're well, smelling. I haven't, I haven't gone through this. So oh. this is from oh, yeah. Canelones in Uruguay. The producer is Marichal. Uh, this is a 2018, so it's our oldest one. It was $18.99, so the oldest of the bunch. It's from wine.com. It's 13% alcohol. So again, that's a little on the low end. 100% Tanat. Wine enthusiasts gave this an 89. And I will say this is, I keep hitting that. Bottle. I will say this wine is like the basketball of, of wine bottles. Because it's like tall and thin. I know. <laughs> Basketball player, I should say. Yeah. Anyway, uh, what are you smelling? Well, it's, it's more similar to the first one. Not as much tartness on it. Um, I would say I'm smelling some darker cherries. Yeah, this is reminding me a little bit mm-hmm. of like a Chianti or something. Okay. I agree. Cherry. It's pleasant smelling. I don't, it doesn't mm-hmm. smell off. It doesn't no, smell like a turn. So. Despite the fact that the cork was like failing, it, it, it doesn't doesn't smell off. It's a little perfumey also. A little bit, mm-hmm. but I think it's pretty like got that like cherry kind of smell. 
I'm not getting smoke. Are you getting smoke? I'm getting leather on it. Okay. I'm getting a yes. tiny bit of smoke, a, like a, a, a burnt match, but more of, of like leather. I'm getting that mm. leather. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm saying it's kind of reminding me of an Italian wine. Oh, I can smell that leather. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's got some sort of um, le- leather, definitely. I'm getting like shoe leather on it, but um, it's a little bit of spiciness as well. I think it is more similar to the Garçon. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little vanilla. Mm, I, I'm getting, that's where the wood would come from, would mm, be like okay. van, a vanilla kind of smell. I'm with you. Hmm. Okay. I, I think we taste it and okay. see what we think. It's nice. Ooh. It's nice. It's it's interesting. It's almost like a tweener of the first one mm-hmm. and the second one. Yeah, it's a little thinner than the first one. It's, it's a little thinner and it's... But and it's not as tart. As the second one. Yeah. But it's more tart than the Garzon. I think so, I think too. it's more tart than the Garzon. It's smooth again, though. Yeah. It's not oaky. I don't feel like these are oaky wines. No. This reminds me of Italian wine. Yeah. A little thinner. It's reminding me of a Sangiovese for some reason. Okay. okay. I don't know. It's got, like, some similar characteristics. And, you know, Sangioveses can be, like, medium to big bodied and can have some good tannin. They tend to have more acidity, though. Mm. And I'm not sure how much... Uh, this has some sense of acidity to it, but I, uh, it might also be some of that astringency. But it's good. It's nice. Yeah. If you hold it in your mouth, mm-hmm. there's a little, it's a little tartar. Mm-hmm. You know, if you really sort of like do the little. That's what I was saying. I think it's got yeah. more. That's why I'm saying it's kind of a tweener. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have quite the smoothness of the Garzon. Right. It's got more of that tartness of the Maréchal, but it's smoother than the Maréchal, but not as smooth or kind of round mm-hmm. like the Garzon. the Garzon. Yeah. So it's nice wine, but you're right. If you keep it, you get that astringency if you keep it in your mouth. Right. Exactly. Like my, I'm puckering mm-hmm. and um, wow. I, my tongue is dry, but it, it has a, something? it has a richer flavor. It does. But not as rich as the Garzon. And not as rich as a Cabernet. No, 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 no. All. That's why I'm saying like, you I'm not sure. Yeah. Comparing these to Cabernet's well, the Garzon was a little, like, the Garzon reminded me a little bit of, like, a Chateau Saint-Michel Cabernet, where it can be mm-hmm. kind of smooth and mellow and round and nice. Right, right. And calm. Yeah. <laughs> kind of not a calm aggressive. One. Yeah, not as aggressive. This one is, um, this feels more like an Italian wine, a little bit more like that austere kind of like, that I, that, like, those kinds of things that I tend to like in wines. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, oh, so this is yeah. kind of your speed. I like it. I'm yeah. liking it, because yeah. it's got that, like, kind of puckeriness. Kind of like that yeah. thinner, a little bit thinner... It's definitely, it's, yeah, it's it's thin, but that second one was thinner. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that this one is kind of in between the two. It's still, I would say it's still a little bit more tart than I usually would like a mm, wine. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit less smooth from that perspective. Yeah. But, but they're not oaky. Not oaky at all. Not at all. And these are, this is six to 12 months in oak, you know. It's so, amazing. Yeah. This is the one, though, I think, where they held back 30%. Okay, and mixed it, yeah. It's pretty, it's got a little bit of, I'm getting a little bit of that rose flower. Now I'm getting a little more wood and smoke on it, mm-hmm, too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now that it's been sitting in my glass for yeah. a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, What um, What food might you pair with this Tanat, this old Tanat? What would you? I think same things we've been talking about for the Garzon. Mm-hmm. I think it's more of a red meat wine. I think it would, but I think you could serve it with a lot of things lasagna you what about like a lasagna. stuffed like ooh lasagna would be nice yeah. with this what about even like like a bracciole oh yeah bracciole a stuffed flank oh yes but even like stuff we never talked about chicken I feel like you could do oh. like like a rolled chicken with like prosciutto if you and had, pesto and yeah I think if you had some fatty like cheese or pesto yes, or something in there or, yeah I don't think like a I think it would do okay with like a plain baked chicken but I think you need a no, little no, bit no, more no 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 that's what I'm saying like it. for some yeah. reason I've had a little like a little hankering for wow. I don't know Is that why. what we're having tonight. No, a little stuffed chicken, maybe, maybe. Okay. But like so that's Stuff really that I think chicken. That's always Stuff re- that chicken. Hey, hey, my God, where did that come I from? Know. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. You know, but I do feel like this could like complement that type. So hey, hey, I really I like, like to you. be next to you on the yeah. flight. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think it's good. No, I'm totally with you. And I think it's good pizza wine. I think it's a. It's pretty versatile. It'd be good with grilled foods. It'd be good with like. Asian foods, like a teriyaki chicken, I think would be yes, really good with. Yes, it would with. be really nice, yeah. So I think it's good. I think it's pretty versatile. Okay. Uh, what rating would you give this Tanat? You know, I think I would probably, I just don't know if I like it as much as that Garzon. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm still going to give it a seven. Okay. Are you going to change your rating on the Garzon? Are you going to keep it? It's fine. You don't have to change it. No, I mean, I'm not, not pressuring you. Yeah. Change it. Change oh, it. Oh my God. No, I'm no. feeling pressured. No. 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 Um, I think I'll keep them about the same. Okay. All right. 
But I, I probably would drink the Garzon first. Yeah, I'm giving this one a seven. I gave the Garzon an eight. Okay. So I like this. I'd buy it. I think it's good. I think I'd serve it. I think I'd serve it in a variety of situations. Mm-hmm. Kind of like it. It's kind of a little bit more my style. But if I'm going to choose a wine like this, I probably would choose an Italian wine. If I'm going to choose a Tanat, I'd probably go with the Garzon because it's so rich and mm-hmm. nice and, and bold. But mm-hmm. but good wine. Like, and this I do is a think wine. you would choose the Garzon for like those bigger meals like I think the so. steak the grilled I steak think so. and, and a just, stew like if you had a stew right, right. like a pot roast or something yeah. i think Ooh. you would do the garzon but this is nice the marchal is nice yes it's a nice wine we're giving it a good rating at a seven like that's a solid rating so don't you don't, don't read too much don't into that fret. don't fret um, which of these would you finish tonight definitely the garzon me too now yeah, we can share we okay can share. Oh, we can share we huh? can share nice. Let, let's talk about the taste profiles expected from a tanette okay so the typical smell is blackberry black cherry okay. licorice you got licorice mm-hmm. and tobacco mm-hmm. and as it ages it gets aromas of leather game mm-hmm. smoke and cigar box oh you said a lot of those yeah mm-hmm. and l- typical flavors black currant plum licorice smoke and cardamom you were getting cinnamon. I wonder if you're uh, getting a little maybe, bit of cardamom. Maybe, maybe. So the Bodega Girls on the website says, Deep purple in color. This fresh tanat uh, has aromas reminiscent of red and black fruit, which is plum and raspberries, on a spice-flavored aroma. Yep. And the raspberry is interesting. I can go with that. Maybe more on some tart. of these other ones, I think, than the Garzon. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm thinking. The, the wine, tartness of a raspberry. Yeah. Wine enthusiast said aromas of cherry, red plum, and light oak. Uh, the palate feels juicy and medium in body, light spice notes, accent popping plum and raspberry flavors. Raspberry again. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Finish is easy going. Totally agree with that. Uh, Familia Traversa, the website says, uh, intense ruby red color aromas of red fruit and raisins with mineral notes that make it a fresh wine with a tannic power that characterizes it. Nice astringency. I agree with nice astringency. Mm-hmm. The wine enthusiast says, robed in purple fruit. It was very purpley. Mm-hmm. This combines purple. plum and dark raspberry flavors. So a lot of raspberry salty and oceanic in their freshness ripe and soft for tanat this is a clean red to pour with charcuterie okay i'm not quite sure i would agree with with the traversa but i do think of these about these wines in general mm, okay okay and the mari the last one the website says it presents red and black fruit aromas in a mature state smooth texture with an interesting roundness of tannins with hints of vanilla and tobacco okay you got vanilla mm-hmm. wine enthusiast says Pinched blackberry aromas include a note of leather, uh-huh, while this fresh style mm-hmm. tanat is tightly wound with high acidity. Yes. Short pops of tart black cherry, dark plum, and blackberry flavors finish clean and short with a dash of leftover oak. Okay. So I think we got a lot oh. of these flavors. Yeah. I, I really yeah. do. They did we a good job getting, with that. We weren't getting as much of the berry flavors, though. The no, ras, like the raspberry variety or blackberry. Of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I, now, though, I feel like maybe that was something that we were trying to you know, put our no finger on. Nose or nose, nose finger on. on. <laughs> like we were seeing like a tart, tart. like blueberry. Yeah, unripe. And, yeah. Well, yeah. So we were getting some of that. Yeah, and the raspberries are kind of remind me of a more tart berry. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For for sure. For sure. Well, that was really fun. That was so What do you fun. think about Tanat? Like, what, I, you know, do it again? Try it again? I think for sure. Yeah. I just love the idea of bringing something new into the yeah. picture. You know, like being, it's such a conversation piece to bring something in that might, you know, be similar to something else that somebody drinks. Yeah. And so I think it's really fun. I fully agree. And I think it's interesting that they were comparing it to a Cabernet Sauvignon. I don't know that I would totally compare it to a Cabernet Sauvignon. I do. It's for red wine lovers, clearly. Mm-hmm. But it's not, it, I was expecting when they said aggressive and Highly, you oh know, my gosh, I was expecting yeah. something kind of different. I was going to hide. I yeah, exactly. Worried, <laughs> like, don't hit yeah. me. I don't want aggressive. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's m- m- more mellow than I expected. Yes, for sure. So it didn't, I, I like it. What do you think that you're... Cabernet fans would think of it. Like I said, I think they'd like the Garzon. Yeah. I think they would like it. I'm not sure they'd like these other two because they're a little bit more of a, like, I think they're more of like a uh, European style. Mm-hmm. So I think if you like the big American, like, oaky Cabernet, you're probably going to like the Garzon, but I'm not sure you're going to like the other ones all that much. But right. but overall, this is one of those wines, again, where I just think you got to try it. You got to expand your wine horizons and try new things. And this is a great one to try. Yes. Great one to try. I agree. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, Carmela, it's just about time for us to go. But before we do, we want to thank you very much for listening to us. And if you haven't done so yet, now would be a great time to subscribe to our podcast and also a great time to leave us a nice rating or review. So um, we'd also love to hear from you. Uh, 
and we'd love to hear about a wine. Maybe you'd like this to taste and review. So you can leave a message for us on our website at thewinepairpodcast.com, or you can just email us at joe at thewinepairpodcast.com, and Carmela will see them too, even though it's my name. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you can also follow us on Instagram and see pictures of these wines and the bottles and the super tall bottle and all that kind of stuff. And we'd love it if you'd tell a couple of friends and family members about it and, you know, your mom. Tell your mom. Tell your mom. Let's, back to your mom. Let's back, listen. You know what? Let's listen Have together, mom. Have you told mom. your mom yet? Maybe your best friend. Uh, tell or your, your dad. Friend. Tell your dad. Or your dad. Your dad. Mom your dad. or your dad. We always leave out the dads. Tell yeah, your dad. Why? Do why? your dad a solid. Right. Come on. Mm. Okay. Anyway, with that, we're going to sign off. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. And as we like to say, life is short, so stop drinking shitty wine. Wow, you're changing everything up. I know. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Too much, always drink too much, always drink too much.